The U.S. struck a Houthi missile in Yemen early Sunday morning, a third straight day of U.S. strikes against Iran-backed militias in the Middle East. Not clear yet whether Iran will retaliate for the U.S. attacks Friday on its proxies in Syria and Iraq, an escalation ordered by President Biden after the deadly attack that killed three U.S. service members in Jordan last week. Here with me now is President Biden's national security adviser, Jake Sullivan. Thank you so much for being with me this morning. Let's start with the retaliatory strikes in Iraq and Syria. Were any Iranian Revolutionary Guard leaders killed during those strikes? Well, thanks for having me, Dana. And, and as you said, the president ordered strikes in Iraq and Syria in response to the tragic death of three brave service members. Those strikes were carried out Friday night to good effect. And we are still assessing uh, the battle damage. Uh, our CENTCOM, Central Command, uh, is looking at the capabilities we reduced and the casualties that were incurred. So I don't have anything to share with you today on precisely uh, who was taken out in those strikes. Uh, but I would just say that the president was clear when he ordered them and when he conducted them that that was the beginning of our response and there will be more steps to come. How do you define success then? Well, we're going to continue, as we have, to take action uh, when Americans are attacked. When we're attacked in Iraq and Syria, we'll respond. And from our perspective, each action that we take is targeted at reducing the capabilities of the militias to be able to continue to conduct attacks against us and to send a clear message that the United States will respond when our forces are attacked and we will respond uh, with strength and in a sustained way uh, when American casualties are incurred. Uh, okay, I hear what you're saying about the goals, but is there anything more you can tell the American people who are looking to uh, the administration to not just avenge the, the death of three soldiers, but also concerned about the, the region in, in general, about whether or not what happened was successful and how it was successful? Who, who, who got hit? Who got killed? What got taken out? Well, first of all, Dana, the president has approached this with a straightforward principle, which is that the United States will step up and respond when our forces are attacked. And the United States also is not looking for a wider war in the Middle East. We are not looking to take the United States to war. So we are going to continue to pursue a policy that goes down both of those lines simultaneously that responds with force and clarity, as we did on Friday night, uh, but also that continues to hew to an approach that does not get the United States pulled into a war uh, that we have seen too frequently in the Middle East. Past presidents have had to deal with a significant number of American casualties and American deaths in the Middle East because of war. This president is looking to defend our interests and to defend our troops. That's what he's going to continue to do going forward. You said it's just the beginning, and I just want to clarify. That means that there will be more strikes coming in the next few days? What it means is that we will take further action. I'm not going to obviously describe the character of that action because I don't want to telegraph our punches, uh, but there will be further action. Inside Iran, would you rule that out at this point? Look, sitting on a, a national TV program, I'm not going to rule in and rule out uh, any activity anywhere. Uh, what I am going to say is that the president will do what he thinks needs to be done and, again, reinforce the point that he's going to uh, defend our forces and also that he is not looking to get into a war. Well, he's not, but how worried are you that Iran, Iranian-backed forces, may retaliate again against U.S. forces? And if that happens, what would the consequences be? That's a risk. That's always a risk. And we have seen that in the past. We've seen that in this administration. We've seen that in the previous administration, where the U.S. has taken action and the militia groups have responded. Uh, so we are prepared for those contingencies. And the president's basic principle uh, as I've said now uh, a few times on this program, remains consistent, which is if we see more attacks, you'll see more responses. On that, the criticism that we're hearing more and more from mostly Republicans is that this never should have gotten to this place in the first place, because there have been more than 150 attacks on U.S. troops since October 7th. 
And what they say is that the U.S., the Biden administration, should have retaliated sooner before U.S. service members were killed. Do they have a point? Well, first of all, Dana, as you know very well, we have responded multiple times uh, before the tragic events of a few days ago. We have struck targets in both Iraq and Syria. We have gone against IRGC and militia-linked facilities in both Iraq and Syria. We have taken out a militia leader in Iraq. So the notion that we have not responded is just incorrect. The second point I would make is that I didn't hear these same voices, which to me sound mostly like political voices, saying that when American service members were tragically killed by these same militias in the previous administration. It, this is a challenging, difficult issue. It has been for every president uh, over the past 20 years. And every president has sought to defend American forces. This president is doing so uh, with the advice of his military commanders. And he has ordered multiple rounds of military action uh, in response to attacks by these militia groups. Jake, you've said now a couple of times uh, on the show, and you've said it many times before, that the administration is trying to prevent this from spreading into a regional conflict. But if we take a step back, just yesterday, the U.S. and U.K. Uh, responded to Houthi rebels in Yemen. They're engaging in routine attacks on shipping in the Red Sea. There are near daily strikes between Israel and Hezbollah, and much of this is rooted in the war between Israel and Hamas. My colleague Peter Bergen smartly pointed out that this conflict involves 10 countries, at least, four major terrorist groups. So isn't this already a regional conflict? Well, Dana, what I would say is that these are distinct but related challenges. For example, what's happening in the Red Sea is obviously, to a certain extent, uh, triggered by what's happening in Gaza, but it's not the same thing. The Houthis aren't just hitting ships uh, related to Israel. They're hitting a lot of different ships from a lot of different countries. And so we are trying to deal with the challenge to freedom of navigation in the Red Sea. That is a distinct challenge. The forces, in our, the militia groups in Iraq and Syria are hitting our forces. We're responding. And then, of course, Israel is dealing both with the challenge of Hamas in Gaza and the threat from Hezbollah in the north. So we will continue to work to deal with the challenge of escalation and continue uh, to work to ensure we're responding yeah. forcefully, but at the same time uh, staying out of the prospect but of the United States getting pulled into a broad war in the Middle East of the kind that we have seen in the past. I just want to push back a little bit because you just mentioned all of those conflicts as if they are independent. You know better than I, they all lead to one road. Uh, a, a down to one road, and that is the road to Iran. Iran is, by U.S. Uh, intelligence standards and what you all have said publicly, responsible for funding at least a lot of what is going on there. Well, that's absolutely the case. In fact, I've sat on this program previously. I've stood at the podium and explained the relationship between Iran and the Houthis, Iran and the Shia militia groups, Iran and Hezbollah, Iran and Hamas. So... Uh, we make no bones about that. Uh, Iran has a significant and pernicious uh, responsibility for much of the instability in the Middle East. And that has to be factored into how we approach everything that we're doing and how Israel has to approach everything it's doing. Okay, Jake Sullivan, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you.